going to make it. I still think I'm going to be a little loopy by the end of the week, which is why Friday's show is going to be the sip and sip instead of the sip and so. <laughs> All right, we have got a ton of stuff going on today, so let's get right to it. If this is the first time you're joining me, my name is Darlene. I'm with Featherweight Doctor in the Pacific Northwest, beautiful Redmond, Washington. I'm coming to you from my living room in my quilting studio. Uh, I'm gonna say hi to a few friends and then we're gonna get we're gonna get rolling. Let's see here. They see me rolling. <laughs> my producer is right here, so if you hear her tink tink tinking on the keys of the machine, that's her, not me. Um, oopsie, right, just like that. <laughs> okay, let's see here. This, I'm almost there. Hope everybody's having a great day. This weekend was super busy. You know, like, when you over-schedule yourself, like, socially? That's exactly how this weekend went for me today. Like, lots of good... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hold on, sorry, peeps. I just messed up. Oh. Um, hold on. Sorry, I just messed something up. Sorry, friends. Hang on. Your face now. I think I just messed up. Next, I don't think I'm going to be able to see YouTube comments. I'll tell you. You should okay. get on Facebook and smile. Okay, sorry, guys. <laughs> Ray, you're going to have to watch YouTube. It's all good. Okay. I can't see YouTube comments right now. I'm so so sorry. I um, I can only see... Facebook, and I'm not even quite there yet. It says chat is, dis chat is disabled for the live stream. No one can chat. Okay, I apologize, YouTube. I clicked the wrong button, and I don't know how to go back and fix it. Let me just try one thing, and then we're just going to move on, because I don't want to take up too much time with this. Okay. Um, okay. Nope. Okay. There's going to be no... How do I do this? Change more actions. Nope. Edit. Visibility. Audience. <gasps> oh, not made for kids. Okay, I think I can... I think I just fixed it. She disabled the chat. I, I accidentally you. disabled the chat, and I think I just fixed it. I am so sorry, you guys. Hang on. It says update... Did I fix it? Yep. Okay. Look at me go! I figured out a technical problem on the fly! Yay! You have lots of people to say hi to. Okay, I have lots of people to say hi to. I'm coming. I'm coming! Well, now Denise is calling you out. <laughs> okay. Ah! Okay, YouTube, I can see you. I enabled chat, so come say hi. Especially if this is the first time you're joining me, I'd love to introduce myself and get to know you a little better. Okay, so many people to say hi to. We have Faye from Mesa. Hi, Angel, Joe, Ann from Mississippi. Hello, Judy P. No picture yet. What do you mean no picture yet? Lawrence is on. Hi. Uh-oh, Angel says she's stressed. I'll fix that. Uh, Angel says she's stressed and tired from trying to clean up the... Busted pipe mess. Had another leak. Oh, I'm so sorry, sweetheart. Linda Woods on from Texas and Kathy from Illinois. <laughs> uh, Nancy. Hello, Nancy from Lake Stevens. Carolyn from Iowa. Um, Pauline in Texas. Bonnie Pelton. Miss Quilt as you go. Coming to us from uh, Illinois. Becky on from Texas. Lisa's on from Arizona. Debbie from Kentucky. Jen Jen is here. Um, oh, an angel loves my earrings. I know a really nice website you can buy these on. Oh, Reagan already tagged it. This is why she gets the big bucks, folks. This is why she gets the big bucks. Warning, the stream's current is lower than recommended. I don't know. Hi, Pam Green from Louisiana. Hello, hello. Oh, okay, Peggy. So, yes, let us discuss the Band-Aid for a moment. I think I need, I'm vitamin deficient somewhere because I think I have really thin skin. Not like I so emotionally have, 
am easily offended. I am not. I have really thick skin when it comes to that kind of stuff. You have to in order to be on here. But um, I was literally putting the toaster away today. It wasn't even hot or anything. And I sliced my thumb. And it looks like I ma I, my Band-Aid matches my manicure. It was a total accident. Did not do that on purpose. I promise. <laughs> the silly coaster. Sto toaster. Hi, Sherry from Cheyenne. Thanks for joining us. And Sharon's on from Branson. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, Kathy, hi, hi. Dude, we just had, holy buckets, Batman. We just had a squall come through and dump so much rain. Ray and I are downstairs, and I could hear the rain pelting the roof upstairs. That was how heavy of a rain little squall we just had. Hi, Linda from Tennessee. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so Susan Bird. Hi, Susan Bird from Massachusetts. Um, little n unknown fact about me, I was born and raised in New England in uh, Manchester, New Hampshire. You'll know where that is. And my dad worked in Worcester, Mass. So I have been to Massachusetts before. <laughs> Hello, Denise. <laughs> All right, bad toaster. I know you guys. So do you think I'm like, is there any kind of a nurse on here or like a real doctor, not like a sewing machine doctor that can tell me why I cut myself on things like disposable Tupperware and toasters? <laughs> you were in the car, Kathy Heiss, <laughs> driving through the lake. I oh, know. <laughs> Jackie Brand said, one more reason to never put the toaster away. <laughs> Okay, what are we doing tonight? We are doing mitered corners. So uh, I think it's, oh, you already fixed it. Oh, look at her. She's so good. Um, say hi, Ray. Hi. Hi. She says hi. Hi, Patty from West Virginia. Thanks for joining us today. So tonight we're talking about mitered corners. This is scary for some people. I don't know why mitered corners are scary. I, I think no one ever told me I was supposed to be scared of them. So they're just... I just do them. So we're what we're going to do, I'm using the school bell tonight. So this is Mary. Uh, Mary is my 19, early 1934 featherweight. She has that little insignia. Yeah, it's not Worcester, it's Worcester. <laughs> That's how you know I've been there. <laughs> um, so tonight, we're gonna, let's go over to the, the um, this area here. Okay. So tonight I just had some orphan blocks. Yes, I know they're not straight. That's actually embarrassing, but we're going to roll with it. Um, and we're going to put some borders on. Now the thing about border mitered borders is that it's really important that you make sure you cut them so they're extra long. So for instance, this is a three and a half inch border. And so I need to make sure I'm at least three and a half, if not four inches past my edge for this long one and then you also have to do the same thing by making sure you're over you're oversized on this side so what we're going to do before we get into this actually i'm sorry we're going to back up a second uh there's actually a lot of fabric um prints that are kind of lend to this this miter look um, I actually happen to have one in my studio right now. This is a friend of mine's quilt. Her name's Jolene. She's a very special friend. And she, uh, it's a poppy quilt. Look how sweet this is. And notice how there isn't any borders on here. Jolene is, is, is too scared of mitered borders, so I told her I would do it for her. So she gave me the quilt like this. And then this is the, the, the border print stripe. Isn't this pretty? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fussy cut out this big poppy and won't that look nice It went on a miter where you don't have the break in the lines. Hi Deanne, thanks for joining us. So, uh, what, and when you get a, a border stripe like this, Rogue really wants to be on the show. He keeps swiveling around my feet trying to trip me. Um, when you get a border print like this, it's better... Instead of using your rotary cutter to cut this, I encourage people to use their actual fabric scissors because a lot of times these uh, prints are not printed straight. And so you, if you use, if you try to do the folding technique and use 
um, your rotary cutter, your borders aren't going to look straight on after, even if you apply them properly um, with this technique that we're going to talk about today. What's wrong? Your camera is moving on its own. Oh, sorry. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that there are a lot of fabrics that kind of lend to <laughs> lend to borders. Okay, hi Sandy, thanks for joining us tonight. Yes, he wants dinner. Oh, I said it out loud. Oh, <laughs> he literally just went. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I should have spelled it. <laughs> No. I'm using my fancy little featherweight cup. Look how cute this is. I did not make this. I do not carry them. I wish I did. But this is like a custom artesian um, product. So you only can get them, you know, every once in a while when they have some in stock. By itself. Hmm? Your last one keeps moving by itself. Really? I keep putting it in the center and it keeps moving. Hmm. You know what it is? It wasn't level. Hold on, guys. Sorry. There. Okay. It wasn't level. It was bouncing. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. So we'll go back to the board here. So here is the trick. You guys ready for the trick on borders? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up to my border edge. And again, borders require lots of pins. Lots of pins. Do not be shy about using pins. And what I'm going to do is for this first seam, I'm gonna fold this back about a quarter inch, you guys see that? There's about a quarter inch up here. And I'm gonna make a finger press line like this. And then I'm gonna fold it back out. Do you guys see my finger press line? I'm gonna put a pin in that line so I know where to start my sewing. And then I'm going to pin my border down so it doesn't scooch on me. Okay. All the way to this other end. You guys see this okay? Is it in the shot? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna roll this back like so to make a finger press line. Now notice, because this is all just scrap fabric and these are orphan blocks, my, my border on this side is not wide enough. I'm just, it's just cause we're gonna do one, we're gonna do this corner. I'm gonna show you how to attach your border strips like this and then how to do the uh, 45 degree diagonal stitching. All right, so I'm gonna go over here to my machine Oops. and right where my pin is at the quarter inch, not hitting my pin. We don't wanna do metal to metal contact. I am going to start sewing. And I'm probably going to start with a couple of little baby stitches just to make sure that that is a secure flap. And then I'm just going to sew down. I always try not to run over my pins. It's just a good habit to be in. Okay, notice that I'm approaching my other, my bottom pin here. So I'm only sewing right up to that pin, not beyond it. And as I approach it, about a quarter of an inch of the way out in front of the pin. It's moving on its own. Okay, I don't know. I'm going to stop and make my stitches small. So I'm about a quarter of an inch out. I'm going to just take my stitch length and just make it small to really oh oh my gosh <laughs> hey guys i'm out of bobbin i'm out of bobbin thread okay we're gonna run about go back up to the high Jeez, Jeez, honey. um i'm just gonna run a quick bobbin i apologize we have a little joke if this is the first time you're joining me on friday night sip and sew that if i miss sew something or i run out of bobbin which happens like every time um it's a it's a drinking game <laughs> so take a drink everybody
Remember when you're running bobbins that it doesn't stop on its own. You have to be aware of how much you have put on here. Don't get chatting with your girlfriends and gunk up your bobbin holder not or bobbin winder. Not that that's ever happened to me or anything. Okay, that's in nice and tight. I have my readers on the table in case I cannot thread this without the assistance of my reading glasses, but we're gonna give it a go first. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you guys are funny. Yes, I didn't see it. You guys saw it before I did. Okay. Okay. So let's try this again. Now that I have bobbin thread. Oh good, I didn't take that pin out. Super. Okay, again, I'm about a quarter of an inch off my pin. I'm gonna just make my stitches nice and small so that my stuff doesn't come undone. Okay, so I'm gonna take my mm -hmm. pin out. <sighs> Hi, Kay Webster. Oh, and Susan Denton's on from Michigan. Hello, thanks for joining us on YouTube. All right, so what I'm gonna do um, is I'm gonna make a press line here. Actually, before I do the press line, I'm going to sew this next. Let's go over here where you guys can see. I'm going to sew this next border on. So, actually, no, I am going to press. So, first of all, when you're pressing borders, you know that you need to set your seam. So, that means um, press it like this first, and then we're going to go open with it. Okay, I'm actually pressing it towards the outside. Is this not on? Oh, it's not on great. Okay. Like so. Okay, so now we're gonna do this other edge. Can you guys see this okay? I wanna show you too, just real quick. Do you guys see? Can they see that okay? So where the little stitches are, and then I change to a regular stitch length. That's so this, I can handle it a little, little bit, and it's not gonna come I'm done, that's exactly why I did that. All right, now I'm gonna take my next border and make sure that I'm well over, well over what I really need on here. And I'm gonna pin this down. And this time I'm going to stop the same thing about a quarter of an inch off of that seam. And I'm gonna just put a pin right there so I know not to exceed past that sewing wise and then same on this corner i'm going to fold this back about quarter of an inch in like so and just do a finger press on here so that i have a line to work with like so okay so we're just going to sew in between these two pins with some little baby stitches at first and then a regular quilted stitch length and then little baby stitches at the end just so we can kind of handle these corners without having to worry about them coming undone. Oh, thank you, Lawrence. I love this little vintage iron. I, Susan Bird's asking on YouTube too. So I had, um, I got this little iron. It was a gift from my husband off of eBay. You can find them pretty regularly at antique stores. Make sure you find the ones though that have an actual heat regulator on them. The really early ones were just on and off and they got really hot and they can scald your fabric. But this one actually has temperature settings on it and it was made by Singer. I was just at the antique stores in Snohomish, Washington recently and they had a bunch of them there. So they're, they're pretty readily available. This one came off of eBay though. Kay says on YouTube that in Arkansas they had 12 inches of snow for 11 days and it finally melted. Yikes! That is not any fun. Okay, so I'm at the pin. I'm not hitting the pin. I'm just beyond it. 
I'm actually going to bring my bobbin thread up to the top so that it's nice and clean. And I'm just gonna start with some little baby stitches here just to secure that start. And I'm gonna sew down quarter of an inch and I'm gonna stop again about a quarter of an inch off of where I'm gonna finish here at this pin and just change my quilted stitch length to make sure I end with some little baby stitches. Okay, so let me show you what we've done now. It's not working. Okay. I don't think I have it balanced right. Okay, so let's um let's look at this. So now we have let's set our seam first here. Hold on. Do our ironing. Oops, oops, oops. And then we're going to flip this over. And we are going to press this towards the Order. Okay, that is, we're just going to work on this one corner. So we sewed on this side right up to the quarter inch and this side right up to the quarter inch. And so theoretically where these meet in the middle, everything will be stitched right up to close to each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our quilt top, which is basically two little orphan blocks. And we are going to put these seams, these borders together parallel like this, making sure that we have a nice 45 degree angle. And we are even going to take our ruler and we are going to check to make sure that we have a straight outer border like so. So you're straight here and you're at the 45 degree here, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over to the cutting surface and then we're gonna cut, pin, and sew, okay? So I'm gonna do this, oh, oh, don't do that, like so. It's really important that this is straight, otherwise your miters aren't gonna lay as flat as possible. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this 45 degree line through the ruler and put it on the outside of the edge and then I'm going to line up the quilt so that the folded edge is right at the 45. Can they see this really well, Ray? Okay, now we're actually going to go a quarter of an inch past it. See what I did there? because we have to leave our, our seam allowance in there. And if I would have cut it right on the 45, there would have been no seam allowance. So I'm gonna put, put my quarter inch on my ruler up against the rolled edge and make sure my straight line, my 45 degree, is right up against the edge of the quilt. And now I'm gonna cut, okay? Now, everybody hold your breath. <laughs> oh, hey, Beth, that's okay. Don't worry about being late. Um, so don't, everybody hold their breath. Before we do any shifting around of anything, we are going to pin this stitch here. Like so, because we don't want any shifting. Okay, like that. And then what we're gonna do so we're going to go to the machine and I'm going to kind of open this up so I can see where my stitch line is on the one side. And I'm going to sew from that stitch line. Can they see this really well, sweetie? Down here a quarter of an inch. So I'm literally going to just put my needle right where I ended the last time and I'm actually going to bring my threads up to the top like this. So I have my bobbin and my top on top. Okay. 
I'm going to make a series of the little tiny stitches first, just like I did before. And then I'm going to very carefully and gingerly, oops, bigger stitches, sew down, not, um, you don't want to pull or handle this 45 degree very much because it will definitely, because we're dealing with bias here, it's not the straight of grain, but it's the 45 degree, will definitely scooch on you. So here is the inside. What we're gonna do is we're gonna press this back and this open like so. And we have our mitered corner done. Now, I, I did make this look kind of easy because of the fact that we're not dealing with a huge bulk of fabric. Like, good friend Jolene's quilt behind me, the poppy quilt, is not going to be this easy because it's I'm going to be working with, you know, a, a big lap quilt. And do you guys see how nice that looks? And, and if I did this right, which I did, it looks nice and flat and flush on the top of the quilt. No borders waving at us. So obviously working with more fabric is definitely going to make this a harder project, but you apply the same principles and you do the same good practices by using pins and such and you'll be fine. But yeah, so that is how you do a mitered border. Isn't that pretty? I love that effect. Okay, let's see here. So Lisa said we had ice on the roof that caused a leak and melted our new, oh no, retirement. Oh no, the house that the kids are living in, Lisa? That's not good. Hi, Lisa Lazar, how are you? Or Zalero, what did I say, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, well, so that is that is our lesson for tonight. I have some reminders for you because this is kind of a weird week for us out here. Um, so reminder number one is that I will not be, is it the quilt as you no go? Live show. So there will not be a live show on Wednesday. Oh, Beth. sorry, Beth, don't get mad at me. So I, I do... It is easy, Joanne, I promise. I don't, I, there was a pre -recorded? There's a, okay. Start over. Sorry, I have, you guys talking to me, I'm afraid of talking to me. Um, so uh, on Wednesday, we, <laughs> easy peasy, I like it. We, I'm literally in a Sew Expo class from one o'clock Pacific Standard Time until 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, four hours. So I am literally not going to be available on Wednesday at four o'clock for our Quilt As You Go lesson. So what we decided we were gonna do for you folks, um, you're gonna get, for those of you who have paid the entrance fee, you're gonna get your regular email tomorrow with our pattern on it. And it also will have a second link in the email that will lead to a pre-recorded video, which I'm gonna do here in about 10 minutes. Um, and then for everybody else who likes to participate by watching the education portion of it, we're gonna release the pre-recorded video at four o'clock Pacific Standard Time on Wednesday while I'm still in class. So Reagan is going to release it to YouTube and Facebook all at the same time. So everybody will still be caught up and will be on schedule and, but it just won't be Darlene live. It'll just be a pre-record. Um, hey guys, let's just do with some, oh no, 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 that's terrible. Um, okay. So the other reminder is um, Friday, I'm still going to be on at four o'clock Pacific Standard Time for what I'm calling a sip and sip because I am not probably going to feel much like sewing on Friday night, but I still want to hang out with everybody and, and chat. So we're going to have a sip and sip on Friday instead of a sip and sew. We're not going to get silly. We're not doing anything in excess. Just a half a glass of wine, I promise. <laughs> um, there is, so Kathleen Rogers from um, SoCal is asking about the quilt show at Expo. There are still online virtual tickets available on SoExpo.com. Make sure you type that in right. Don't ask me why. Um, and what it is is a $6 entrance fee. And then you have access to all of the free education. So, for instance, on Thursday morning um, and 
Saturday morning, I'm doing a free 45 minute lecture called um, the Singer Featherweight Renaissance. Uh, that's going to be uh, available to you with your $6 admission. You also will have access with your $6 admission to the vendor mall. So like for instance, I'm going to be doing two um, one hour long bits on some of the products that we have on the website and it's it's just our time where you would normally walk the vendor mall section where the vendors have an opportunity to kind of advertise some of their products it wasn't free it wasn't free for us to participate as vendors so you know get out there and support the quilting businesses that paid to participate um anyway i just want to encourage all of you all to check it out because it doesn't matter what part of the country or what part of the world you're in you can still pay $6 and get access to the show. The show starts on Wednesday this week, the 24th, and goes through Sunday the 28th. And there is a whole schedule of events and fun that will happen. Um, I am very excited. Sandy Martin, hello. Hello, hello uh, on YouTube. All right. No, one more. One more reminder. Don't tell me. I'll think about it. I'll do my hand. Oh, I wasn't going to remember that. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> so if you are local to me here in the Pacific Northwest, I house, or no, I host, I should say, a featherweight club where you can come and sew on your own projects for $5. And it's in Snohomish at a beautiful store called Quilting Mayhem. Um, it's tomorrow, this, this month. Normally it is the... Um, fourth Wednesday of the month but that's so expo so I couldn't do it on that day so I moved it till tomorrow which is Tuesday so if you're in the area and you want to pack up your featherweight and um, your mask and a project of your choice you can come sew with me I'll be available at Quilting Mayhem from 10 to 2 and you just have to register on Quilting Mayhem and pay your five dollars and come and see me that would be really fun there's going to be a, a couple of us um, Quilting Mayhem is a ginormous facility so they have lots of room for social distancing and all that fun stuff um, thank you, Bonnie. Bonnie says, good luck with Expo. If I'm totally being transparent with you folks, I'm a little nervous. I don't know why. I do this all the time with you, but it just, it's really important to me that this go well and that, uh, and that we just have a good showing. So thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I appreciate everybody tuning in and learning about mitered quilting borders. If you have any questions for me regarding quilting or the featherweight that you would like me to highlight on one of my upcoming shows, please feel free to email me at info, I-N-F-O, at featherweightdoctor.com. I'd love to, I'd love to get on camera and talk about whatever it is you need to talk, uh, me to talk about. So, <laughs> I'm tired. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I hope you have a great rest of your evening. I will not see you live on Wednesday, but there will be a show posted. And then I will see you live on Friday for our sip and sip. Is your necklace a... No, that's a good idea, though, Deanne. It's it's just a little... My necklace just is a little... Um, It's a little pendant. You want to know what it says? It says sink or swim. That's what my pendant says. It's one of my life mantras. Oh, good. Kathy's got her ticket. Awesome. All right, guys. I'll talk to you live in person on Friday. I hope.